Okay, in this video I want to do a little bit of a recap of how to solve uh, trigonometric equations between a certain range, or a certain domain rather. Now this is going to be leading up to being able to solve a trigonometric equation in its most general case. That's really where we want to be. So for this first video I just want to make sure that you're aware and you know how to solve an equation like this, for example. So sine x equals one half, and we're going to solve it between 0 and 360. So first things to do is to sketch sine. So sine looks like this, and between three, 0 and 360 we're going to have 0, 180 and 360. Okay. Now if we're going to be solving it as x, uh, sine x equals a half, then we know that the sine curve goes between minus 1 and 1, and so one half would be there, and so this line is going to intersect the curve at two points. So we know that there are going to be two solutions to find. So the first thing we do is we inverse sine the minus a half. Making sure your calculator is in degrees, so inverse sine one half, and you get 30 degrees. So our first solution here is 30. The second solution can be found by thinking, well, between 0 and the first solution is 30 degrees. And because of the symmetry of the curve, this distance between our second solution and 180 is also going to be 30 degrees. So the second solution can be found by subtracting this number from 30. So that gets us 150 degrees. So 30 degrees and 50 degrees are the answers that I'm looking for. They are the two solutions that I need to solve this problem. Let's look at another one. Let's keep with sine. So let's say we want to solve sine of 2x is equal to 1 over root 2. And this time we're going to solve it between 0 and 2 pi. So this time we're going to be working in radians. So like in the first example, we sketch the sine curve. And this time, because we're in radians, we're going 0, pi, 2 pi. Okay? So... 1 over root 2 will be up here, positive, so we'll be expecting two solutions if I was solving sine x equals 1 over root 2. I know I'm solving sine of 2x equals 1 over root 2, but you'll see how we develop that in a moment. So the first thing we do is inverse sine 1 over root 2. So that means that 2x is going to be equal to inverse sine of 1 over root 2. So 1 over root 2, and that's going to give you 45 degrees. Now, as in the first example, that, oh sorry, I'm in degrees, I should be in radians. So, let's turn to radians. Inverse sine of 1 over root 2 is pi over 4, sorry. Or 1 quarter pi. So, this distance between 0 and our first solution is pi over 4. So that means that the distance between pi and our second uh, solution is also pi over 4. So we can find the second solution by doing pi take away pi over 4. So in exactly the same way as I did 180 take away 60 as before. So pi take away pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. So these would be the two solutions that I would have if I was solving the sine of x equals 1 over root 2. But because I'm solving sine of 2x, I must take into account that what's happened is that this has been stretched by a factor of a half in the x direction. So instead of having a period of 2 pi, so 2 pi is what it is repeating over, it is now repeating over pi, so it's shrunk. So that means that if it has now a period of pi, 
I'm going to be able to add pi on to get the other solutions that I need. Because I'm not just looking for two solutions anymore. I must be looking for four. The actual curve would look like this. And my 1 over root 2 is actually going to give me four solutions. So the first two, get that pen because that one's not working very well. The first two can be found by dividing through by 2. So 2x equals pi over 4, so x must equal pi over 8. That gives me my first solution. If I divide both sides of this equation by 2, I get 3 pi over 8. That's my second solution. But as you can see, there are two more solutions. And because I now know that the sine curve will repeat every pi, because it's sine of 2x, I can add pi to both of my solutions to get the remaining two answers. So if I add pi to pi over 8, I get 9 pi over 8. And if I add pi to 3 pi over 8, I get uh, 11 pi over 8. And these are my four solutions to that equation. Okay? So it's a little bit more, a little bit more long-winded because we're dealing with sine 2x. It's all got to do with the fact that if we were dealing with sine x, that has a period of 2 pi, or if we're in degrees 360. But sine 2x will have a period of pi, or 180 if you're in degrees. So it's all got to do with how that graph has been stretched and transformed, okay? Stretched in the x direction.